When a gas dissolves in a liquid, we can write that expression as the gas as a reactant going to the aqueous gas, if the liquid is water, as the product. Writing the equilibrium expression for that with a slight rearrangement gives us the concentration of the dissolved gas is equal to the equilibrium constant times the partial pressure of that gas. When I tabulate these equilibrium constants, you can determine solubilities, relative solubilities. The larger the K, the more soluble the gas. And that makes sense in this form because you see for a given partial pressure, a larger K means you'd get a larger concentration of the dissolved gas. A bigger K also means the reaction favors the products, which we were saying is the dissolved gas. So here I have a few. Notice helium and nitrogen here. These gases are not very soluble. They have Ks less than one. The solubility reaction is not even spontaneous. We have a few here slightly larger than one. So argon, xenon, and oxygen slightly more soluble. Carbon dioxide, more soluble than all these combined so far. And we use carbon dioxide in carbonated beverages to get those bubbles when the carbon dioxide starts to come out of solution and form carbon dioxide gas. Ammonia, by far the most soluble. And when ammonia dissolves, there's a large K, and we get a high concentration of dissolved ammonia. In fact, ammonia so readily dissolves, if you have a reaction that produces ammonia, you can use water, do that reaction over water, so the ammonia, as it's produced, dissolves in the water, and it's removed from the reaction. And of course, by Le Chatelier's principle, that would help you produce more ammonia. So water can be used to scrub clean ammonia from a system because of this high solubility. We can see a demonstration of the high solubility of ammonia in the demonstration lab.